Hearing Roy's calm voice, Crocodile's eyes suddenly filled with bloodshot eyes. Silent anger quickly filled his brain like a raging tide. His body gradually unraveled, rolling up bursts of yellow sand, trying to struggle. But a foot wrapped around hockey fell heavily like a heavy sledgehammer and hit his back. Boom. The violent hockey broke out again, and under the power of Roy's horror, Crocodile spit out another mouthful of blood, and the whole person was deeply embedded into the ground like a fly. The earth cracked again, and the shocking cracks spread in all directions centered on Crocodile. Don't you believe it? But this is the truth. Roy's eyes were cold and authentic. Don't force me to kill you, you should understand that you are not the only candidate to be seven warlords of the sea. Even if I kill you here, the military will only give me a warning at best, and it won't have any substantial impact on me at all. But you are different. Crocodile, your goal is to cross the new world, to become the One Piece? But if you die here, you will never have any chance again. The unabashed threatening tone slowly spoke in Roy's mouth, making Crocodile chill all over his body. He subconsciously remained silent. Roy gave him a satisfied look. He doesn't have a lot of favors with pirates like Crocodile. Although this guy was washed out in the plot after the top war, this did not change his essence as a criminal pirate. The disaster of Alabasta, countless innocent citizens died because of his ambition alone. Countless families have become fragmented because of his conspiracy. Put the happiness of most people under one's success? Roy can't agree with this philosophy at all. For this kind of guy. Only use the strongest and most powerful posture to make him yield. Use violence to control violence, in order to achieve the best results. Roy doesn't like violence, but he is not taboo to use violence. Tisk tusk tusk. So this is your justice as marine? But at this moment, Crocodile suddenly let out a mocking laugh. He turned his head, out of sight, he glanced at Roy. There was sarcasm in his eyes. I heard that you were regarded as the hope of justice by many young marines, and your reputation has even spread to New World. But in the end, aren't you also a running dog of the world government? Facing me, don't you want to use violence to solve the problem? It's a laugh off people's big teeth. Roy, after all, you are just a hypocritical person. But to Crocodile's surprise, Roy was not irritated by his words, but suddenly laughed. What are you laughing at? An unnamed anger surged in Crocodile's heart. Roy shook his head. I just didn't expect you to use such bad words to try to provoke me. With someone like you, it's not enough to talk about justice. Marine is marine, civilians are civilians, pirates are pirates. Crocodile, in the final analysis, you so-called pirates are just a group of rubbish who wantonly plunder and squeeze the happiness of others under the name of freedom and dreams. This conversation. Let's stop here. I don't need to talk nonsense with you. He slowly let go of the foot that was pressing Crocodile's back. From this moment on, you are the seven warlords of the sea recognized by the world government and marine. You must accept the emergency call of naval headquarters at any time, and move within a certain scope and authority. Of course, if you have to go to Whitebeard to die, I won't stop you. This is your freedom. My order has been taken. There is only one end to refusal. You should be very clear. Finished. Roy turned around and waved away at the marine subordinates. Crocodile spit out bloody sputum, looked at Roy's back with a grim expression, and clenched his hands. His expression is volatile and complex, but in the end he finally loosened the clenched fist. At this moment, Roy, who was preparing to board the warship, suddenly stopped. Crocodile, I am so disappointed in you. If you resist desperately, even if you lose your life, I will retain at least a trace of admiration for you. Respect you for being a man. But now, you let me see a very real problem. The so-called vicious pirates are nothing more than a group of evil spirits without faith. When the voice fell, Roy stepped aboard the warship and set sail. Crocodile froze in place for a long time with a pale face. Until the warship was about to disappear from the end of the field of vision. Only then did he burst out an angry roar from his horse. Damn Roy! Endless wind and sand, corrupted the entire island. On the warship, listening to the astonishing movement from the island far behind. A cold smile gradually emerged from the corners of Roy's mouth. He is very familiar with people like Crocodile. No matter how clean this guy was washed by Oda in the war on the top, his essence is still that way. It's the coward who lost to Whitebeard's hands and was devastated and tried to dominate the new world by relying on the so-called external force, Pluton. Said very bluntly, this is also the portrayal and true face of the vast majority of pirates on this sea. He doesn't care if Crocodile will stupidly try to challenge Whitebeard after this incident. Anyway, the final outcome will not change much. It was himself who invited him into Seven Warlords of the Sea. After this introduction was buried, 
the operation of many things in the future could be much more convenient. The seven warlords of the sea system will be abolished sooner or later. Roy knew this very well, because at least as far as the original plot is concerned. In the eyes of the world government and naval headquarters, the Shichibukai forces that maintain the balance of the sea, apart from adding chaos, have not been able to do anything to curb the establishment and expansion of the four emperors' structure. Hakai Mahawk has been autistic all year round, and doesn't care about anything but swordsmanship. The pirate lady Bull Hancock had a corner in the Amazon Lily as her Earth Emperor, and even helped Luffy and his party sneak into Impel Down during the war on the top, freeing countless world-class criminals imprisoned in Impel Down. Crocodile, the Sand Crocodile, upset Alabasta and overthrew the rule of Alabasta's royal power. The people of that supposedly prosperous country were left unsettled in wars continued. Gecko Moria sits in the sea of the Devil's Triangle, digging graves all over the world, doing some wicked things that have no assholes. The Flamingo Don Quixote da Flamingo seizes the Dress Rosa regime, seeks various illegal black trades in the underground world, and cooperates with the Beast Kaido to furiously export wars throughout the world. The Shichibukai, one by one, didn't listen to the announcement, except that it caused Marine's own back door to catch fire, and it had no effect at all. Maintain the stability of the world structure? Roy didn't believe in such nonsense and shit reasons. Aren't you afraid that guy will hate you? At this time, the ghost spider suddenly came over and asked in a deep voice. Although he was asking such a question, his tone did not have the slightest worries or worries, only pure curiosity. He and Roy didn't know each other for a long time, and it took only half a year to make a full calculation. But don't know why, the ghost spider felt in his heart as if he had known Roy for a long, long time. That feeling cannot be explained clearly in words. Perhaps it is the trust that only the comrades in arms who have entrusted each other with their lives and deaths. And it is this, the ghost spider will not question any of Roy's decisions. Because judging from everything that happened in the past, Roy's decision may seem ridiculous at the moment it happened. But the end of the matter, often he will win. Yes, he will win, will always win, ghost spiders believe this deeply than anyone else. Roy shook his head and chuckled. It doesn't matter whether you remember the hate or not. As a marine, I should be hated by pirates. I just need Crocodile to understand that I am far better than him. As long as I am stronger than him, this grudge will turn into fear, so that he can't get rid of it day and night. The ghost spider took a deep look at Roy, and suddenly said. I always thought that your preconceived notion of treating pirates would be like treating an ordinary person. Roy asked. Ordinary people? You mean, all people are equal, this concept? The ghost spider nodded, because you are a very gentle person. Roy sighed. Some people don't deserve to talk about justice. His gaze looked at the sea in the distance, and his eyes were in a daze. Most people wishfully believe that every heart that stops beating is worthy of our mourning without discrimination. There is no distinction between high and low, distant and close relatives. Someone will ask. Are all lives equal? Most people will answer without hesitation, yes. However, what if the dead person is the one we love? The answer, I'm afraid it won't be so consistent, right? What if a good person died? What about a loved one? What about a valuable person? What if the dead person is a child? The ghost spider was startled. He gradually realized the meaning behind Roy's voice. Roy slowly said, The sinful pirates are not worthy of sympathy. They have their own sufferings and stories. Yes, but they are not worthy of sympathy. Because they have killed some people who are cherished by others. So the pirates don't deserve to talk about justice. The ghost spider paused, then asked, then what if it is a pirate who never robs, never kills, or does anything bad? Roy was taken aback. The figure of the straw hat pirates came to mind. He smiled. They don't deserve sympathy either. Even if they haven't committed any heinous crimes, their behavior has given many other people in this sea a bad example of learning. There will be many people wearing the Shanghai pirate skull banner because of them. And the pirates who have all the lessons after this, can you guarantee that they will not do bad things? After all, this is not the problem of pirates, this is the problem of this era of big pirates. Roy's words caused the ghost spider to fall into a bottomless silence, and his thin, gloomy lips were pressed tightly. As a marine, from the day when the ghost spider entered the military academy, he began to learn what justice is. But the military academy's ideological and political textbooks put marine and pirates in an extremely antagonistic relationship. Marine is justice, pirate is sin. This is the conclusion, there is not much explanation. But this conclusion is not enough for the vast majority of military academies, even Marine. Because in their long military career, they will meet all kinds of people. 
Marine is not all justice, there is also a lot of garbage in Marine that is doing evil, bullying, and oppressing civilians. Pirates are not all sins, there are also some so-called adventurers in the pirates who have never killed anyone before and just run away when facing Marine. But at this moment, Roy's words made the ghost spider truly feel shocked. The question in his heart that had existed for a long time, finally got the answer. Are those pirate adventurers who don't kill or do evil really sinful? Roy was also stunned. To be honest, he is not disgusted with adventurers like Straw Hat Pirates and Luffy. After all, the main theme of this world is the adventure of the pirates, not the justice of the marine. But anime is an anime after all. When watching anime, all of us put ourselves in God's sight to watch all this happen. Our emotions will change because of the experience of the protagonist, Luffy. But is this really the case? Luffy in their every move, is it really impossible to fault it? In order to break through and pell down, how many criminals did he release? And those criminals, how many civilians have been massacred and how many wars have been waged throughout the world? And because of the existence of the Straw Hat Pirates, how many people are following their way, sailing out to sea with so-called freedom and dreams? Finally fell into the abyss of evil? This is the drawback of this era. Blue Brew. Just as the two of them were in a state of uncertainty, a rapid telephone worm sounded suddenly. Roy and the ghost spider were stunned. Then Roy took out a military phone worm from his arms. It's the communication of the headquarters. The ghost spider said solemnly and looked at Roy subconsciously. Roy frowned and connected the phone worm's signal. I am Roy. Sangoku's voice came from the phone worm, expressing a kind of anxiety. Roy, how is the mission accomplished? Roy Kaido. Report to Marshal Sangoku that Crocodile's order has been brought, and I gave him an offer that I couldn't refuse. Sangoku paused. That's good, since your side has successfully completed the task, the old man is not polite to you. He was silent for several seconds before slowly saying. I need you to find someone, Roy asked. Who? Sangoku's solemn voice slowly sounded. Don Quixote da Flamingo, the voice fell. Before Roy spoke, the ghost spider next to him changed his face. Marshal Sangoku, Don Quixote da Flamingo is a big pirate from North Blue. The Don Quixote Pirates group he formed almost turned North Blue upside down. Roy said solemnly. This guy is very strong. Like Crocodile, he is also a supernova who is breaking into the new world. On the other side of the phone worm, Sangoku looked at an emergency document branded with the world government logo with a serious face and nodded. Yes, but it's not that simple. Don Quixote da Flamingo has done something to Heavenly Gold. But you are the only person in the new world sea area who has enough strength to stop him. Roy was taken aback, and immediately remembered. Heavenly Gold is a regular tribute from the world government's major alliance countries to the world's noble celestial dragons, it includes countless gold and silver treasures, rare and exotic products, and its value is inestimable. Because of its immeasurable value, the world government will send members of the CP department to escort each time it pays tribute to the sky. But after all, this is the property of the world government. No one dares to move in this sea. Therefore, generally speaking, the CP personnel who go to escort are not too strong, just acting. I just didn't expect, there are people who are so bold and reckless to fight for this heavenly gold idea. But this Don Quixote da Flamingo is not moving. Roy frowned and asked, Marshal Sangoku, what do you need me to do this time? Sangoku slowly said, this time, your goal is to take the heavenly gold from da Flamingo's hands and ensure that there is no loss of the heavenly gold. Da Flamingo has made his request. He threatened the world government to give him the title of Seven Warlords of the Sea. It's not impossible to give him the title of Shichibukai, but it doesn't look good for the government if the matter of gold is worn out. So, this matter must be handled low-key, the title of Seven Warlords of the Sea can be given, but it cannot be threatened like this. Roy was silent. This world government still has to maintain its own face after all. And listening to the anxious tone in Sengoku's voice that could not be concealed, he could clearly feel the former's heartburn at this moment. So, my goal is to grab Revolving Heaven from Don Quixote da Flamingo first, and then give him a little warning. He hit the nail on the head. On the other side of the military phone worm, Sangoku was taken aback, and Chunin couldn't help feeling Roy's keenness. Yes. He thought about it and said, Da Flamingo. His identity is a bit special. The old man knows your attitude towards the pirates, but if you cannot move him, try not to move him. You must be cautious about the task this time, Roy. Then Sengoku briefly explained to Roy the approximate location of the heavenly gold robbed in a few words, analyzed the possible hidden location of Doflamingo, and hung up the phone in a hurry. On the deck of a warship, the harsh and icy sea breeze slapped people's faces continuously. 
Both Roy and Ghost Spider fell into a long silence. After a long time, the Ghost Spider twisted his eyebrows and said solemnly. Marshal Sengoku meant that we can't do something against the Don Quixote pirates? Aren't they pirates? Roy smiled bitterly. They are pirates. It's not that we can't do something against the Don Quixote pirates, but we can't do something against Doflamingo. This is an obvious difference. Why? When the ghost spider heard Roy's words, his pupils shrank slightly, and he already had guesses in his heart, but he couldn't help but ask for confirmation. That guess was too terrifying and terrifying, and he couldn't help but feel a strange sense of anxiety. Roy shook his head and said, Don Quixote Doflamingo is celestial dragons. New world, a small country. A ship flying a black pirate flag, slowly approaching the shore. Hey, hey, it looks like a very prosperous country. In that case, let's rest and rest here. The jealous and weird laughter came from the deck of the pirate ship. Then a tall blonde man in a pink feather coat jumped off the bow of the boat with weird steps. He stepped on a pair of exaggerated pointed toe leather shoes, wearing cropped trousers and a pair of sunglasses. Whether it was the footsteps, the demeanor, or the small gestures of hooking fingers from time to time, there was a gloomy and arrogant taste. As he walked off the pirate ship, his figure, tall and short, followed closely behind him, not trying to conceal their identity as a pirate, and swaggered into this prosperous, unknown country. Young master, shall we rest here? One of the pirates looked at the crowded streets in the distance, with a cruel grin at the corner of his mouth, and asked in a low voice. What he said was, rest, but tremblingly, he drew the knife out of his hand. The knife also has a distinctive bloodline, obviously just drank human blood. If someone carefully and closely recognizes the expressions of this group of pirates, it is estimated that it can be clearly found. The trembling passed on from them, it's not because of fear or something else. It's because of excitement. The desire to simply want to destroy and destroy all good things. Don Quixote Pirates. North Blue has risen to fame and swept all the way into the unstoppable supernova pirates of New World. There are countless islands and small countries slaughtered and looted in their hands, and they are known as the cruelest and cruel pirate group. Yes, let's take this opportunity to rest. Anyway, this can also remind the old guys in the world government to make them move faster. The blonde young man is naturally Don Quixote da Flamingo. His eyes quickly scanned the small country in the distance. That kind of lively, crowded, and prosperous scene. As if making him a little impatient, there was a stern smile on his lips. He slowly raised his hand, the five fingers twitched occasionally in the air. It seems to have just moved a little bit. Then. Foo 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 foo, I'll go. Let's make trouble as much as you want. Neither the marine nor the world government dare to trouble us. The moment the voice fell, the pirates behind Doflamingo could no longer restrain the urge to kill and plunder in their hearts, and rushed out impatiently. They carry weapons, there was a crazy grin on the corner of his mouth. Unscrupulously rushed into the stunned crowd. Suddenly, the entire small country was plunged into boundless chaos and blood. One by one, the incomparably vivid lives fell amidst the pirates' grinning laughter, changing into icy corpses. Horrified civilians scurrying on the street with their heads in arms. Weeping bitterly. The whole world, in just a few minutes. From prosperity and peace, changes have been depraved and bloody. Killing, destroy, riot, trample, plunder. All the negative words in the world seemed to be unable to describe the tragic scene before him. The pirate grinned, waving weapons at the civilians in front of them. Without the slightest hesitation, as if shivering in front of them. It's not a living life and flesh and blood, just beasts waiting to be slaughtered. The commoners wailed and screamed hoarsely, they flee desperately. Did not let the pirates have the slightest tendency to stop. On the contrary, the twisted and pervert desire to kill in their hearts is inflated even more. But in ten minutes, the bustling commercial streets that were originally hundreds of meters long have completely turned into a hell on earth. Twitching corpses and rotten flesh and blood were scattered everywhere. The blood pooled into a river, the collapse of the house caused a fire. The billowing smoke rose, it seemed to obscure the light from the sky. Foo 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 foo, people really enjoy the picture ah. The very center of the street, Doflamingo opened his arms excitedly, took a deep breath of the rich bloody smell in the air through his nose, and let out a sickly crazy laugh. Many civilians tried to rush towards him with wooden sticks and other weapons. Full of resentment, but when they were about to touch the blonde figure. They all found out with great horror, suddenly, his body was strangely unable to move. That feeling, it's as if my nerves can't control my body. Every muscle seems to be bound, frozen in place like a string puppet. Their eyeballs protruded in fear, and their pupils were bloodshot. Hume. 
Do you still want to resist? Yes, it seems that none of you understand. Doflamingo shook his head sarcastically. There is a gap between this person and person after all. This gap is destined from the moment you were born and cannot be changed. I am a god who stood on the top of the mountain since I was born. He hooked his index finger, huh. A touch of invisible cold light flashed in the void, leaving a thin bloodline on the shoulder of one of the civilians. Puff. The commoner let out a tragic wailing. He gained control of the body again, the whole person knelt on the ground. The broken arm slowly slipped from the bloodline on his shoulder. Rolled to the ground, blood spilled all over the floor. Doflamingo continued with a grin, it's my privilege to be satisfied with everything. Huh. Another bloodline crossed, another civilian's feet were alive and severed by some invisible sharpness. The civilian also knelt on the ground in pain. Doflamingo kept hooking his fingers, swish. Civilians one after another, a certain part of the body is cut off. Then he knelt in front of him one after another. He gave a frantic grin. This world only exists to welcome my arrival. No one can change this. I am Don Quixote Doflamingo, the god you all must bow down to. Waved his hands at the same time, buzzing. The air suddenly exploded with sharp and incomparable whistling noises. That is the sound of sharp objects cutting the air. But at this moment, Kang. A ray of sparks suddenly splashed in front of Doflamingo, and in the flickering light, Doflamingo's face suddenly became extremely gloomy. Hume. First didn't expect Marine to send you out, it really got interesting. It seems that the old man Sengoku is also anxious. But, are you sure, can you stop me? Or, even if you can stop me, would you dare to kill me? Hume. You dare. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, Blue Tiger, Roy. Doflamingo looked at the boy Marine, who was surrounded by blue airwaves in front of him, grabbed his invisible silk thread with one hand, and smiled madly at the young Marine whose palm was overflowing with blood. Roy slowly raised his head. My palm is bleeding continuously from the wound cut by Doflamingo silk thread. The piercing pain flooded into the brain, but his mind was calm. He quickly glanced at the unsightly tragic surroundings, and said coldly. You are too much, Don Quixote Doflamingo. When Doflamingo heard Roy's words, he was taken aback for a moment, and then he laughed even more uncontrollably. He seemed to have heard some ridiculous joke. The whole person could not help convulsing with a smile. Am I going too far? Hume. Roy, don't you think this is normal? In this world, the weak do not even have the right to choose to die. Open your eyes and see, this group of stupid civilians, they are actually trying to resist the noble me. But in the end, they don't even have a chance to commit suicide. This is the most wonderful place in this era. As long as you are strong enough, you are justice, you are yearned by thousands and admired by countless people. No matter how dark your methods are, how many lives are in your hands, it doesn't matter at all. Hume Doflamingo covered his face with one hand, and the arc outlined at the corner of his mouth oozes a frenzy and unscrupulousness. At this moment, following Roy's quick landing from the coast, the marines who tried to rush to stop the crazy behavior of the Don Quixote pirates, all heard Doflamingo's laugh. Each of them froze in place with a stiff expression, and the hands that had clenched their weapons were shaking slightly, their faces pale. Yes, this is the sorrow of this so-called Great Pirate Age. The evil is derived and spreading wildly in every corner of the world. Pirates unscrupulously deprived ordinary people of the right to survive and pursue happiness in the name of so-called freedom and dream. It is the victor who walks on the world stage. This is the helplessness of Marine, they can't save everyone. Even many times, they will be blamed by civilians. Blame them for not arriving earlier, scold them why they didn't kill all the pirates. Curse why they are always late, it makes them more discouraged and tired. It's the civilians who are gradually reaching the end. Began to lose trust in marine and faith in justice. They began to sink, began to be like the pirates who hurt them. Embarked on a sinful path of no return, to hurt others. Take the pain I have endured, it was imposed on those who had nothing to do with them in the first place. Doflamingo smiled even more triumphantly as if he sensed the hesitation in the hearts of hundreds of marines on the court. Did you see it, Roy? I heard that you shocked marine. But what's the use of all this in the end? You can't change this era. Only I, Doflamingo, is the master of this era. Doflamingo looked at Roy, who was silent in front of him, with cold eyes, spreading his hands and chuckles. Hey, the essence of this sea is that the weak eat the strong, and the strong dominate everything about the weak. So have you finished? Suddenly, the low voice sounded, as if it was a big drink, and it exploded on the court like a thunderbolt. This voice, 
as if with a certain unique charm and power, shocked the marines who looked hesitant and questioned. I'm here this time, not to reason with you. I have only one purpose, and that is to let you hand over the gold in the sky, and then get out of my sight. This is an order, do not accept rejection. Da Flamingo was taken aback for a moment, his eyes quickly stained with boundless anger. Who do you think you are? He roared suddenly, shocking bloodshots oozing from his eyes under the sunglasses. You are nothing but garbage from a civilian background. A waste. Fortunately to be taken as a student by Zephyr's soft bastard, and killed the golden lion on the battlefield, do you really think you can compare with the three marine monsters? Da Flamingo was angry. At this age, it was the most frivolous, arrogant, and domineering time. He is West Blue's strongest rising star pirate. He was born in the most noble lineage, his strength is extremely powerful, and he has obtained the extremely powerful devil fruit. He used the cruelest way to suppress his enemies. Let everyone be afraid of him, but at the same time he also has a unique personality and charisma. At a young age, so many loyal and powerful subordinates gathered around. It can be said unceremoniously, whether it's talent, origin or fortune. He is countless times stronger than Roy in front of him. But the damn marine kid in front of him, dare to order himself. You should, he gave a violent shout, suddenly. A fist that seemed to burn with azure flames was frantically magnified in the reflection of his sunglasses. Boom. He didn't have time to react at all. He only felt an unimaginable terrifying force, which immediately smashed his body. Furious hockey, turned into an unstoppable impact. It's like a huge, towering mountain collapsed. Da Flamingo didn't even have time to finish speaking. The whole person flew upside down, dragging a long bloodline like a cannonball. His body flipped uncontrollably in midair in that rundown commercial street. After crashing at least ten houses one after another, he fell into the eleventh house. Rumble. Shocking and terrible sounds of houses collapsing continuously, and the ground under their feet seemed to tremble clearly. Little Lord. Dover. Damn. All the members of the Don Quixote family were all horrified, shouting in horror. They didn't expect it at all. This marine was so bold and daring to deal with their little initiative. They did not expect, the strength of this marine is so powerful and domineering. Rubble churning, the wind is falling, Roy stood in the ruins, slowly retracting his fist. It doesn't matter what you say, but you can't insult that old man. His voice was very hoarse. In the hoarse voice, anyone can hear the deeply suppressed anger. The piercing wind wave wrapped around the boy marine's body like a violent wind. Surge like a hurricane. Quiet, deathly silence. The terrifying pressure caused cracks in the ground under Roy's feet inch by inch, and rubble flew around. The face of the ghost spider not far away can't see where it is. Zephyr was also his mentor, to their group of military academies even more unreservedly. Such a kindness, it can be said unceremoniously that it is unclear for a lifetime. Da Flamingo can scold them for being weak, can mock their actions. It can even be said that they are garbage from a stinking ditch. But they definitely don't allow anyone to question the old man with purple hair who has given all his life to justice and marine. Hume. It's really a very good power. But if you only have this level, it is unlikely that you want to win revolving heaven from my Doflamingo's hands. In the distant building collapsed like a ruin, a grinning hiss came out. Huh. A blood-stained hand suddenly stretched out from the ruins. Then he pulled back and flicked. Dozens of subtle rays of light seemed to flash in the air. Then the wisps of sharpness, which is almost invisible to the naked eye, quickly twisted into a string of mad hockey's breath, like an iron whip that fell from the sky, and fell fiercely in the direction where Roy was. Wow. The thread column is so sharp that it makes the scalp numb. Wherever it went, whether it is a solid building, a fragile human body, or a dilapidated earth. They were all cut open like tofu in an instant. A weird incision appeared. The string with the terrible cutting force threw down heavily. Roy raised his hand blankly, one catch, boom. Amazing power burst out, and the ground under Roy's feet cracked again. He was also pressed down by this string for half a meter. Drops of scarlet blood, slowly dripping down Roy's arm that wraps hockey. The string squeezed tightly in his hands trembled. The armament hockey of Roy's master is just getting started, and its usage is only limited to winding. It can't harden the armor color and form an invisible armor like Zephyr does to greatly enhance the defense. Rumble. The end of the string, in the rubble formed by the collapsed house. A pink figure stood staggeringly, the blonde hair that was originally well groomed was stained with blood and sweat, mixed with dust and stuck to the scalp. There was a dazzling blood stain at the corner of Doflamingo's mouth. Hume. How's it going? Is your temper uncontrollable all of a sudden? Don't you think I'm right? 
neither you nor your teacher, Zephyr, are just losers competing in the same era. He raised his hand to wipe the blood on the corner of his mouth and sneered. There is no superior birth and pedigree, whatever effort, what self-discipline, what hard work. In the end, it was just shivering and lingering in the shadow of geniuses and kings like me. Hume. You should know who I am. The damn old man Sengoku, I should have mentioned it to you in a vague way. So you understood from the beginning, the gap between you and me. That kind of gap is not a difference in strength, but a real gap in status. Compared to me, you are just a trash that should be lying in a stinking ditch. Boom. The moment the voice fell, Doflamingo stepped on the ground. The thunder-like noise exploded with a bang, I saw him pulling the string in his hand with one hand. The whole person rose up into the sky and shot directly towards Roy at an incredible speed. Fast speed. The ghost spider's pupils shrank. Also as one of the pirate supernovas in this period. Don Quixote Doflamingo in front of you, whether it's combat experience, physical explosion, or the use of Devil Fruit's abilities. They are obviously beyond the sand crocodile, crocodile a lot. The distance of 100 meters came in an instant. But for a moment, Doflamingo is a ghost that generally appears on Roy's head. Raise your right hand high, five fingers bend slightly. There was a strange cold glow between his fingers. A wisp of severe aura quickly wrapped around his five fingers. Armament hockey entangles. Doflamingo is also the master hockey. Looking down at Roy condescendingly, Doflamingo's mouth showed a mocking and enjoyable expression. That's right, it's this kind of angle, no matter it is anyone. You must look up at yourself from this angle. Father is so stupid, such noble status and status were all abandoned. Civilian? What is good about civilians? Only the supreme power and position, that's what he Doflamingo wants. Die. Doflamingo waved his hand, dropping ruffian string. Five forked silk threads, like falling leaf targets, stabbed towards Roy. Kill. Go. For justice. At the moment Doflamingo began to counterattack Roy, the marines also reacted immediately, and under the leadership of the ghost spider, attacked the members of the Don Quixote pirates. Suddenly they drew their sabers from their waists and rushed directly into the blood-stained street towards the crowd of pirates. The ghost spider naturally found the strongest guy among them. The disgusting guy with a long nose on his face. Torupal, one of the highest cadres of the Don Quixote pirates, is extremely powerful. This bit of information, marine or master must be clear. The cruel battle begins. With marines' participation in the war, the civilians who were destined to be mercilessly slaughtered were able to breathe, and fled out with their heads in their hands. On the other side, chi 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 chi. The five silk threads wrapped around hockey also pierced the air, and fell with a frightened whistling sound. But the blue marine figure has disappeared in place like a ghost. The thread that threw an empty shot pierced the ground deeply, leaving a few tiny invisible holes on the dilapidated ground. I don't know how deep it went. Um? Doflamingo made a suspicious sound. The speed Roy exploded was a bit beyond his expectation. The first hit before, he admitted that he was a little underestimated and let down his vigilance. But this scene before me, but it was inexplicably cold in his heart. Let's talk about it, where did you hide the heavenly gold? Roy's indifferent voice sounded from behind, Doflamingo's reaction was not slow, and his backhand was a blow. A thin golden yellow line suddenly drew across the void, with a length of hundreds of meters, cutting everything within a half circle into two sections. Attack, fail again. The next moment, boom. Doflamingo bends over, bleeding from his mouth, and his figure flies upside down again like a cannonball. His body dragged a long dent on the ground before slowly stopping, panting heavily. Damn. Damn. How can you have such power? How can it be? You are obviously just a damn civilian. Doflamingo roared frantically, waving his hands together. The void suddenly exploded with countless howls of air. The ground in front of him also showed slender traces one after another. Roy's figure dodges from left to right in the sky full of silk fierce winds, sometimes throwing his fists to block. The surface of the body was gradually marked by Doflamingo's attacks with clear bloodstains. But his eyes, it is brighter than ever, civilian? Celestial dragons? He said coldly, this kind of stupid concept. I am afraid that only paranoid people like you will believe it. Doflamingo, I don't want to talk so much nonsense to you. Obviously hand over the heavenly gold. Doflamingo laughed madly. Hand over the heavenly gold? Don't be delusional. He suddenly opened his hands at the same time. A shocking scene appeared, countless slender threads. Like a continuous white meteor, swarming from all over his body. Constantly rising to the sky. Like a volcanic eruption. 
Thousands of transparent threads erupted somewhere in the air, and then fell like a meteor shower. When the thread fell to the ground, it plunged into the ground like a sharp spear. From a distance, when falling to the ground, the silk thread will extend from a point in the air to the point on the ground, forming a suffocating white network. These countless threads, it forms an arc-shaped huge birdcage from the air to the ground. Hume. Marine? Do you think you can really do anything to me? Don't worry. I will personally make you this rubbish desperate. I want you to watch everyone on this island, including your subordinates, all being cut into meat sauce. Doflamingo grinned distortedly. Do not know why. Looking at the face of Roy in front of him that seems to be always persevering and unyielding. In my mind, I recalled that he had heard many rumors about the self-discipline and hard work of this marine star. Doflamingo clearly felt the distorted and uncontrollable desire for destruction in his heart. Inflated frantically. Doflamingo knows how it feels. When he killed all the civilians who had persecuted him. His heart is full of such emotions, it's so annoying. It's disgusting, obviously they are garbage and ants with poor talents. A mouse that has no birth at all, but dare to show off in front of me. Doflamingo can't accept it, self-discipline? Effort? Desperately? He does not accept such an explanation. If these things are really useful, it's not just abruptly taking all of one's own. Including the blood of the noble celestial dragons. Are completely overthrown, has it become meaningless? I want to ruin everything in this marine. Doflamingo roared frantically in his heart. Ha 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 ha, you are all dead. Dover used that trick. No one can escape. You stupid marines will all die here, in the chaotic battle. Toripal raised his cane and pressed it firmly against the ghost spider's double knives, a cruel grin outlined on his ugly and slimy face. The ghost spider twisted his eyebrows very tightly, and his expression was extremely cold. Rumble. The sharp white lines stuck in the ground in the distance have slowly begun to move. Collapsed houses, solid rock, lush vegetation. No matter what it is, in front of the slender white line that seems fragile and breaks at the touch. Like the softest thing in the world, it was cut abruptly. He raised his head subconsciously, glanced quickly at the center point above his head that was connected with countless white lines, and there was a deep chill in his heart. These countless sharp white lines has completely enveloped this island. Like a big net of death that drags everything into the bloody abyss. Slowly gathered at a speed visible to the naked eye. Birdcage, just like this creepy name. This is a cage that will slowly put everyone in the envelope to death. The ghost spider saw Marine trying to kill Birdcage with various attacks. But none of the attacks worked. The shell is automatically cut in half as soon as it touches the Birdcage thread. The sword hit hard, it just made a powerless and desperate clang of gold and iron, splashing bursts of sparks. As you can imagine, when this so called Birdcage is completely closed to ultimate. This island, all living creatures in this small country including tens of thousands of civilians and their marines, will become piles of rotten meat sauce. You are so damn. Doflamingo. The cold voice popped out between Roy's clenched teeth, revealing an incomparably serious killing intent. He glanced at the surrounding situation quickly, and his heart sank quickly. Doflamingo, a lunatic, actually used birdcage. Damn it. Doflamingo heard Roy's cold voice, wiped the bloodline at the corner of his mouth, and sneered frantically. I know what you think of me. Roy. What a bastard, you think so in your heart, right? He stared jokingly at Roy's face that had become stiff from excessive anger, and he felt a vengeful sensation of exhaustion in his heart. It's so enjoyable, this expression. That's right. Trash like you, this expression should be used. But you are right at all. Doflamingo raised his blood-stained hand, gently stroked it across his cheek, stretched out his long tongue and licked the handle, his expression paranoid and sick. But, do you know? All the victors, all the superiors, all the successful people. They didn't become bastards afterwards, we have been a bastard from the beginning, long before we succeeded. That's why we succeeded. Kindness? Good? Justice? Gentle? Guard? Doflamingo is authentic, word by word. Every time a word is spoken, the voice became louder and mocking. That kind of thing is just an excuse to make a person weak. My stupid father is such a person. Like an idiot who clearly possesses the most noble status and wealth of celestial dragons, but naively said to be an ordinary person and a commoner. What's good about ordinary people? Huh? He roared frantically, even spitting out stars. What about the final outcome? Mother doesn't even have the money to see a doctor. Our family is reduced to going to the trash can to find food. So. After my mother died of illness, I couldn't help it anymore. Since my stupid father wants to be a civilian, 
then he should die like a civilian, incompetent and desperate. So I killed him myself. Hume. It's so happy. You don't know how wonderful his expression is when I shoot at him. That is from that moment, I, Da Flamingo, decided not to be an ordinary person again. I am a born and noble existence. Trash like you should be like my useless father, kneeling and dying in front of me. The voice falls. Boom. As soon as Da Flamingo stepped on the ground, the silk thread wrapped around hockey flew out in his hand. Die. To blame, blame your ordinary life and vulgar origin. Laugh. The ground by the feet suddenly cracked into deep scratches. The strong wind that came from the veneer even caused pain in the cheeks. There was a small blood colored hole. Da Flamingo's hideous face was close at hand, and even Roy seemed to be able to see the crimson crazy eyes under his sunglasses. This moment, suddenly, many pictures appeared in his mind. Flashed by, as if nothing was left, he just took a deep breath. Hume. This is the end of ordinary people. Da Flamingo grinned and swung a paw. Laugh. The blood shot out, dots of blood, spinning in the squally wind. Then dissipated. The smile on Da Flamingo's face suddenly stiffened. The expression is also frozen. One hand stubbornly grasped the silk thread he waved in the void, and the fingers were bleeding. So, Roy, who has been silent for a long time, rang in a low voice. If I am rubbish, then what is you who was knocked down by me is rubbish. Da Flamingo was taken aback when he heard the words. Boom. The boundless wave of air exploded in the void, blowing that white, generous justice skin dancing wildly. Snapped. Void. Suddenly a strange purple lightning flashed silently. How can it be? The pupils under Da Flamingo's sunglasses suddenly shrank, and he let out a low voice with surprise. How could you? Damn. A marine, how could you awaken conqueror's hockey? He suddenly roared frantically, and a majestic aura broke out from all over his body. Boom. 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 Suddenly. The whole world seemed to have stagnated at this moment. Time seems to have become sluggish. Countless civilians. Members of Don Quixote pirates, there are hundreds of marines. They all turned their heads in horror, both eyes were staring at the two figures who were wrestling frantically. Endless wind, like wild waves of ups and downs. Make an amazing collision in the void, even bursts of purple thunder flashing interlaced. Two horror auras like a violent storm, at this moment, Da Flamingo and Roy erupted at the same time, setting off a thrilling movement. That marine, actually awakened conqueror's hockey. He actually has the kingly spirit like the young master. Is this real? A marine has such courage. Toripal and other members of the Don Quixote family made trembling voices. They couldn't believe that there would be someone in marine who possessed the spirit of a king. The collision of conqueror's hockey, never seen before. Da Flamingo. To be honest, I really don't want to fight you. Roy's voice slowly sounded at this moment, various constraints, messy relationships. Originally, my purpose of coming this time was only to regain the heavenly gold in your hands. But. In Da Flamingo's stunned eyes, Roy raised his head abruptly. The eyes are full of wild fighting spirit. I spent a lot of time thinking about avoiding conflict, thinking about slowing down. But I found out that I was wrong. The world didn't want me to take it easy for a while. God damn it, this F asterisk King Fate must fight him. Since you Ishan wants to see the strength of my garbage. Roy smiled coldly. Then, boom. Crazy waves of air burst forth suddenly, the skin on Roy's body. It quickly turns red at an alarming speed visible to the naked eye. The blue veins on his forehead violently violently. A layer of blood was stained around the pupils of both eyes. Let you see with your own eyes, the efforts of ordinary people. Is there any point at all? With a violent shout. Da Flamingo was forced to fly out by the surging air. Boom. Immediately after, an amazing blue wave of air. Soaring into the sky in the center of the island, straight into the sky. Eight inner gates fifth gate Duman, open. An unstoppable chill suddenly surged in Da Flamingo's heart, and his eyes were fixed on Roy, who was full of white smoke. Hoo hoo hoo. The billowing white mist, layers upon layers escaped from Roy's skin pores, exuding amazing power. The momentum of the body has risen again and again. In an instant, everyone stared at the two figures looking at each other in shock. Those two, one person has stood at the top of the world since he was born. Possess supreme power and noble blood and the other one. But they are ordinary people who climb step by step from the bottom. Them. One is a pirate, is a man destined to be the king of the dark world. One is Marine Fung, he is the boy who is expected by countless people to become the Justice Marine Admiral. Their talents are far apart, it's even like a cloud of mud. But now, 
this moment, they are all standing on opposite sides of each other. This is a battle between old enemies, it turned out to be like this. Hey, hey, he actually overdrafts his body by a large margin to achieve combat power beyond the limits of the body. This is how you ordinary people fight. Every time you fight, you are desperate. Every time I shot it, it seemed like walking a tightrope on the edge of a cliff, it's so sad. Doflamingo quickly observed Roy's physical condition, and then suddenly sneered. Since he was a child, he has experienced countless disasters and endured countless pains. It would not be easy to surrender to the powerful power that Roy showed. But what can you do like this? You can't stop me at all. Doflamingo grinned and waved his hands heavily. There were countless shocking air howls in the void again. Invisible edge, like countless shadows, it quickly enveloped Roy. Doflamingo. Do you know why Marshal Sora gave me the marine code name, Blue Tiger? Facing the countless invisible threads that could easily cut the body's limbs and flesh and blood, Roy just smiled coldly. Doflamingo was taken aback, immediately his eyes widened. The pupil under the sunglasses shrank tightly. Because he saw an extremely shocking picture. A blue tiger with a huge head slowly raised, with the fall of Roy's words. The blue air waves lingering and burning from the surface of his body. Converged quickly. Roar. The dense silk thread like a rain curtain also crashed down at this time. I only heard the roar of a tiger that seemed to shake the world suddenly exploded. Then everyone saw a thrilling and shocking scene. Behind Roy is the Madara tiger, which is formed by lingering blue air waves. Suddenly let out a roar resounding through the world. Head up and whistling. The sharp threads all over the sky suddenly stagnated in midair. It seems to have encountered some kind of invisible block. Shaking and unable to fall. How can it be? That is. Hockey? Doflamingo's eyes were splitting and let out a scream of exclamation. Yes, this blue tiger is not purely composed of the airwaves that drive the eight inner gates, it also entangles armament hockey. Since Roy tried to open the sixth gate of the eight inner gates after repeated frustrations, he began to work hard to figure out and study how he could better use the power of eight inner gates. And this kind of exploration and exploration. Finally, under the guidance of the old man Zephyr, he mastered how armament hockey works get an unprecedented breakthrough. Although it takes a lot of energy and hockey to barely maintain the energy form of this tiger. But the explosive power of this trick, Roy himself has never seen it before. Doflamingo, perhaps no matter where you are, birthplace, talent, pedigree, are all very important. Roy raised his head. The firm and bright light in the eyes. It's as dazzling as a star. But, instead of living desperately in this self-pity mood, it's better to burn your life truly and indulgently. Roy let out a wild roar, this is my decision. Pain? I can't understand the pain you endured, but this cannot be a reason for you to hurt others. The skin on his surface gradually appeared torn. Brutal blood, it filled the surface of his body. But he laughed wildly, incomparably invigorating. Lousy wants to win, he said this softly. Then, as usual, just like in the training ground in the past. In every battle, in every desperate jump and struggle. Throw a fist. Roar. Next moment. The roar of the tiger roared all over the world. Everyone on the entire island saw a scene they will never forget. A huge blue tiger, roar unyieldingly, ripped apart the birdcage that had imprisoned all lives. Blue light, soaring into the sky, gradually cover all vision. Rumble. The deafening roar sounded one after another. Swept through a violent hurricane, set off one layer after another of the earth. I don't know how many buildings were completely destroyed and collapsed in this mighty storm. Alone. The most powerful weapon, it's not a sword in your hand. But the heart that is willing to go all out, brave. D. Hard working heart. This battle, after all, it is bright. Conquer the darkness. After a long time. It seems to be an extremely long century, the birdcage above the head slowly dissipated. Turned into raindrops, crash in the sky. And then fall to the earth, dissipate invisible. People, marine and the pirate, they all stop the movement involuntarily. Holding breath and looking towards the center of the earth. Tigers roar in the sky, the flamingo wailed low. The billowing dust was gradually blown away by the strong wind. Everything on the earth came into view, however. When each of them saw the picture on the earth clearly. Everyone couldn't help taking a breath. Dover. Little lord. The young master was defeated. How can this be? The members of the Don Quixote pirates screamed in horror, and their bloodshot eyes widened. Their young master, the man they regarded as king. The doflamingo in a pink feather coat lay motionless on the ground. The whole body is covered with sticky bloodline. It seemed to sink into a pool of blood, and that marine boy. 
but it was panting slightly, spread your feet like two sharp nails. Put Doflamingo's hands on the ground fiercely, unable to move. Roy's right hand, turned into unbreakable iron tongs. Pinch Doflamingo's throat tightly. Go and save the young master. Shoot. Kill that marine vice admiral. The members of the Don Quixote pirates were very anxious and roared one after another, trying to rush towards Roy. But the next moment, the ghost spider and other marine members suddenly stood in front of them, and blocked their way with a vigilant look. Can you let you pass? Don Quixote pirates, you have been arrested. The ghost spider squeezed the Lingbing saber in his hand, and said in a cold expression, with a murderous look. Hey, 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 it's such a powerful force. I didn't expect it at all. A mere rubbish could have such power. Just when Marine and the pirate were diametrically opposite each other. Not far away, Doflamingo's rebellious sneer laughter came out again. I saw Doflamingo's face pale and breathless, the chest is constantly rising and falling rapidly. But the corner of his mouth was sketched with a disapproving sneer. You are indeed better than me, but what can you do? Kill me? Hume, I guess you dare not. The old man Sengoku should have clearly reminded you of this, and you know very well that as a marine, once you move me, you won't be able to turn over in your life. Roy's face sank, his lips pressed tightly, and he said nothing. Seeing Roy's expression, Doflamingo smiled more wildly and proudly. Hume, it's a very good expression. That's right, it's such an unwilling expression that makes my whole person tremble with excitement. A sickly, twisted flush appeared on Doflamingo's pale face. You are better than me. I admit this, but ah, you should be very helpless now. Obviously better than me, but it can't kill me. Obviously he is a marine, but he can't do anything with a pirate. I can only watch the civilians on this island being slaughtered by me. Hume. So, this proves that what I just said is correct. My birth, my status, and my bloodliness are not something you can fight against the rats and garbage that crawl out of the stinking ditch. I'm destined to always be better than you. Roy's eyes were cold, but at this moment. Bluebrew. A rush of phone bugs rang. Doflamingo smiled more wanton. Let's connect. It is estimated that the old man Sengoku is looking for you. Maybe, he asked you to kill me. This is Marshal Marine's order. Roy gritted his teeth. The left hand took out the military phone worm from his arms and connected the signal. Marshal Sengoku, this is Roy. His tone was harsh and hoarse. Roy, has the task been solved? Sengoku came out of the phone worm with a hint of worry. Roy has not had time to speak, Doflamingo already grinned and said to the phone. Hey, old man Sengoku, your Roy Vice Admiral is quite amazing. He not only captured me beautifully, but now his hand is still tightly pinched on my throat, looking at him, it seems that he is going to kill me at any time. His face was full of mocking smiles, very ostentatious. What do you think I should do? I'm going to die in the hands of you Marine Future Star. At that time, your headquarters will have to give him an award. Maybe if you have the chance, then you can give him a good official promotion. Hey, hey. This moment, Doflamingo's crazy grinning laugh. Like a thin cold needle, deeply inserted into the hearts of all Marines present. Arrogant, furious, unscrupulous, contempt. Mocking. All these words are mixed in Doflamingo's tone, but he does not have the respect and fear of being a pirate to a Marine's supreme commander. This is an extremely refreshing scene of the three views of man. The Marines listened to Doflamingo's provocative words, and only felt that there was some unattainable solid belief in their hearts, like a collapsed great wall, slowly collapsing. What kind of era is this? In their Marines' mind. Marshal Marine represents the top spot in the power of justice. It is the object of admiration and worship of hundreds of thousands or even millions of Marines throughout the world. To some extent, a position like Marshal Marine not only means Marine's supreme commander, it's the faith of countless young Marines. It is the most feared object of the pirates who do evil and all perfect in this sea. But now, a pirate supernova in Doflamingo. But dared brazenly, without hesitation. He spoke rudely and even mocked their marine's supreme commander. Each of them opened their eyes wide, and couldn't believe that all this happened in front of them. But what they didn't even expect was, the next scene. It is the most chilling. After a weird silence. Marshal Sengoku's hoarse and even gritted voice came slowly from the military phone bug. Doflamingo, hand over the heavenly gold, everyone was taken aback. Marshal Sengoku did not refute Doflamingo's words at all, but bypassed his provocation and just made another irrelevant request. Doflamingo sneered. But what should I do? Now, your master marine vice admiral, who is full of expectations by countless people, has caught my throat tightly. I can't even move a finger now. In other words, if this matter about me gets to Marie Joy's, 
it will probably have a bad effect on you, the new Marshal Marine. Hume. There was another deathly silence. After a long time, Sangoku's angry and helpless voice sounded again. Roy Vice Admiral, let go of Doflamingo. Roy's face suddenly became ugly, and his teeth crackled. Marshal Sangoku, Doflamingo and his pirate group have caused at least thousands of civilian deaths on the island where I live, and the property losses are countless. I don't care how many casualties he caused. Sangoku's roar suddenly blasted the microphone of the military phoneworm. Roy was taken aback. Now your most important goal is to regain the heavenly gold in Doflamingo's hands. Other circumstances can be completely ignored and let the past go to blame. Roy Vice Admiral, this is your mission. Your only task, anything outside of the task, you don't need to worry about it. All the losses on this island, world government and naval headquarters will try to make up for it in the future. The families of the civilians who died will receive a subsidy that they can't spend their entire lives. The reconstruction of this small country will also be carried out as soon as possible with the support of the government and the military. The old man only said it once in the end, Sangoku's tone gradually became extremely tough. Let go of Doflamingo. Doflamingo, if you hand over the heavenly gold, neither the military nor the government will pursue this matter again. Your seven warlords of the sea title document has been approved. One month later, this news will be reported and made public by the most authoritative newspaper. Doflamingo could no longer hold back his inner pleasure, and said with a loud grin. What a great job. Old Sangoku man. Marijo chose you as the new marine marshal, but it really made a pretty good decision. A jealous sneer, drifting in the cold wind of the void. The cold sea breeze, it made the hearts of all marines chill. Suddenly, Roy's voice sounded, so, Marshal Sangoku, is this the end of this matter? We marine. He raised his head subconsciously. Look at the broken street in front of you, collapsed building. The corpses of civilians everywhere, the blood gathered into a small river. He almost broke his teeth, this will only be possible in the future. Dignified and just, you can only wipe Doflamingo's ass like a dog. Subsidies? Reconstruction? He stared at the bloody, painful and blank faces of the civilians with red eyes. Can you really make up for all these sins with money? Sangoku was unmoved and said coldly, Roy Vice Admiral, that's the end of this matter. Porusalino Admiral is already on the way. He will receive Doflamingo and go to revolving heaven for gold. Your mission has been completed. Do not. Roy stubbornly shook his head, his voice roaring like a beast. Can't stop here. This matter is not over yet. Because the sins have not been cleared, he looked at the painful faces of the civilians. Looking at the corpses all over the earth, looking at the dumb and unbelievable eyes of the marines. Seeing the arrogant grinning gradually revealed by the pirates. In blood-red eyes, as if made up some determination. Resolute and firm. What do you want to do? Hum. Do you really dare to kill me? The voices of Sengoku and Doflamingo sounded at the same time. Then, Roy directly cut off the phoneworm communication with one hand. Actually, I hate your laughter, it's ugly. Roy stared in front of him. Doflamingo's face gradually solidified, with a horrified face, and his tone was serious. His other hand, outrageously, snapped. He choked off Doflamingo's throat, pink feathers. Slowly falling from the sky. As the cartilage of the throat was squeezed alive, the clear voice rang out abruptly. A daze flashed across the faces of everyone present. The pink feathers floating in the air fell scattered and turned into fly ash as soon as they touched the ground. It's troublesome now. The ghost spider's stiff, solidified face flashed with astonishment, and then the corners of his mouth slowly and involuntarily showed a touch of bitterness. Not just him, other marines also looked at the scene in front of them with a stunned expression. Staring stunnedly, slowly raising the blood-filled hand. There was an unprecedented chill in his heart. This moment, the pores all over their bodies suddenly exploded, as if they were thrown into a tank of water filled with thousands of years of ice, and their bodies trembled uncontrollably. Roy, actually directly defies Marshal Sengoku's orders. Killed Doflamingo. I don't know why, the marines stared at the bloody picture with dull eyes, but there was a sense of inexplicable joy in their hearts in vain. That feeling, it's like a lion imprisoned in an iron cage. Finally got rid of the control of the cage, freed from the shackles of the chains. Braving the threat of death and cliffs, jump bravely. Finally soaring straight to the nine heavens and clouds. Wanton flying and invigorating dripping, tick. On Roy's slightly drooping palm, the rich, dazzling red blood slowly slid down between his fingers. He let go of Doflamingo's hands, there was an indescribable calm in his eyes. Quietly looking down at the latter, Doflamingo. This future is destined to stir countless men in the entire new world. 
This future emperor of the dark world, this future king of seven warlords of the sea, dress Rosa. The face is twisted and full of boundless pain. The blue veins on his forehead violently, under the sunglasses, the pupils of both eyes were filled with bloodshot eyes. His eyes were unbelievable and unbelievable, I tightly covered my bursting throat with both hands. Staring at Roy with hatred and hatred, Gurulu. He wants to talk, want to curse, but his throat was ripped open, and his trachea and esophagus were full of blood. In the end, he could only open his mouth, unable to say a word, and could only make the sound of gurgling, bubbling bubbles. Blood red bubbles spurted from his mouth, and then gathered into a thick liquid and slipped down. Gurgling blood, he couldn't help but gushing out from between his fingers covering his throat. I know what you want to say. Roy's eyes were calm and said. You want to say, how dare you, right? To be honest, I don't dare. His tone is free and easy and decisive to see through everything. Only the slightest regret and hesitation could not be heard. You are aloof, your blood is noble, I am just an ant like existence in your eyes. My hard work, my self discipline, my hard work, and the blood I swayed are nothing but the ants' pitiful struggles against real geniuses and superiors in your opinion, which is totally meaningless. Everything you say, your ridicule, your ridicule, is just to let me sadly know a truth. This is my life. Fate is like an ant, it is my fate. But at this point, Roy suddenly smiled. It was a calm but confident smile. But Lousy doesn't accept his fate. Why should I admit my fate? Working hard means not recognizing one's fate. I train hard with the sunrise at four o'clock in the morning every day. I manage my life obediently and in an orderly manner. I hardly have any entertainment time, I can't even remember how many trainings and battles I have done with my own life. Yes, I am not a genius. I admit this, I know it better than anyone. My background is also very ordinary, very ordinary, let alone a person like you, and even an ordinary noble family is a hundred times superior to me. Tick, patter. The precarious drizzle, I don't know when it started to fall. The rain washed the sky above the head gray, and the air was filled with a strange smell of blood and corrupt branches and leaves. The nail-like rain hit Roy's cheek, and he doesn't hide or avoid it. There is a smile on the corner of his mouth, this moment. Suddenly, Roy's mind began to think of the past life. Seemingly flat voice, in fact, I have rushed to ultimate. He sniffed, as if he had a cold, but he couldn't deceive himself. I really want to hide. Avoid all this and be a marine with peace of mind, and grow a little bit every step of the way every day, and then in your lifetime, if you have the opportunity, you can be a marine admiral. He laughed wantonly, but God didn't give me such a chance. That bitch, the goddess of fate, always changes his way to find various ways to amuse me. Picture after picture flashed quickly before his eyes. Golden lion's smirk, O'Hara's flame, the pink feathers in front of me. Then there is no way. Since all of you don't want me to get better, then I won't accept it. Fate is not forgiving, but Roy never wanted to bypass fate. He, clenched fists. Then, Doflamingo's pupils. With emotions of bleak, doubt, anger, resentment. Slowly dissipated. Maybe to the last moment of life. He couldn't even figure it out, this marine. What is the reason for having this courage, kill him? Breathing stops. No life. Died. Doflamingo, just died like this. Facing Roy with full combat power without the slightest strength to fight back. The throat was crushed alive, like a dog. Cut off vitality. You are dead. Suddenly. A roar from the bottom of the exhaustion exploded like thunder, shocking everyone's eardrums. Toripal stared at Roy with a pale face and a distorted expression, and he let out a numbing complaint. You dare to kill Dover. No one can protect you. Do you know his identity? Do you think he is just a supernova pirate as simple as that? You are dead. All of you are dead. Toripal snarled frantically as if he was frustrated, and his mouth was cracked with a cold and unbridled grin. Our great young master, Don Quixote da Flamingo, is the celestial dragons of the world nobleman. All the marines here, do not, he raised his cane. Quickly swept across everyone's horrified and shocked faces. Everyone on this island must be buried with Dover. The moment the voice fell, whether it was marine or a civilian, his complexion changed abruptly, as if a thunderstorm exploded in his mind and as if a turbulent volcanic eruption had erupted, his body trembled and took two steps back. There was a thin layer of cold sweat coming out of their backs, and they only felt chills in their heads. Nobles of the world, celestial dragons. The appearance of these two words, like two extremely sharp invisible swords, they plunged deeply into the souls of all of them. The civilians knelt on the ground with their faces dead. Tears flowed uncontrollably from his empty eyes. That incredible pirate, 
it turned out to be celestial dragons. Celestial dragons. That is the supreme ruler on this sea, a race with all power, wealth and status. They are the gods of this world, living high above the top of the red line, the place known as the Holy Land Marie Joys, look down at the world with playful eyes like a god. Anyone who dares to offend celestial dragons will encounter the most cruel capital punishment and be wanted by the world government forever. The noble status of celestial dragons, even Marine Admiral had to forcibly accept the order to protect celestial dragons. It can be said unceremoniously, the political pattern and the existence of naval headquarters on the entire ocean today. To a large extent it is to maintain the rule of the world government. More precisely, to maintain the supremacy and status of celestial dragons. But Roy, that marine boy, killed the celestial dragons. Die. Dot you all have to be buried with Dover. Torpal was still laughing frantically, but his laughter suddenly stopped. Huh. A stern black sword light flashed in front of him. There is an extra line of blood in his throat. Shut up. The grim face of the ghost spider appeared in front of him. Torpal fell slowly with a trembling body, his face full of disbelief. He couldn't believe it, after knowing the true identity of Doflamingo. This marine dared to attack him. The scarlet blood gradually soaked Torpal's body. The Don Quixote pirates slaughtered civilians. The evidence is conclusive and must be killed on the spot. The ghost spider said coldly, with an incomparable killing intent emerging from his body. The other marines were washed away by the killing intent on his body, and their body shook suddenly, and immediately reacted quickly and attacked the pirates one after another. Doflamingo is dead, this has become a fact. But besides him, the other members of the Don Quixote pirates are not celestial dragons, they are just pirates. Kill. In just a few minutes, the blood shed all over the place. None of the members of the Don Quixote pirates were able to escape, and they were all annihilated by Marine. The air is full of bloody and strange smell, which makes people sick. What shall we do next? After the ghost spider solved the remnants of the Don Quixote pirates, he walked towards Roy with a bloody face and asked in a deep voice. Roy glanced at him quietly, then quickly glanced at the other Marines. Shook his head and said, No, there is no S in this matter. Only me. I killed Doflamingo. This has nothing to do with the rest of you. The ghost spider was taken aback. A touch of shame and guilt appeared on the faces of other Marines. Rain, relentlessly. The dense rain curtain shrouded the entire world, making people breathless. The ghost spider clenched his fist tightly and glanced at Doflamingo's body on the ground, but was interrupted by Roy when he wanted to speak. It's fine. The ghost spider raised his head. Greet you, it was Roy's face with a smile as usual. It's really okay. When the ghost spider heard this sound, his eyes were suddenly red. Roy patted him on the shoulder and smiled lightly. Everyone has his own choice. This is my choice. Once you choose, don't regret it. He paused, then suddenly said, You say yes, Paluzalino Admiral? Everyone was stunned and turned back subconsciously. I saw in the void at that location, countless golden photons surging one after another, converging into a single figure. Kazaru, wearing an admiral uniform, glanced at the corpse on the ground, a strange cold light shone under the sunglasses, and his expression was strange and authentic. Roy Vice Admiral, you really did an amazing thing. Doflamingo's throat was directly cut off by you, this death is really terrifying. Kazaru's expression was teased as before, but his gaze stayed for a while on the terrifying gully on the ground that was so huge that it had been plowed by a giant outside the sky. That was the scar of Roy caused by the roar of the tiger just now. Roy slowly turned around, looked at Kazaru calmly, and said lightly. Porusolino Admiral, you must be here to receive Doflamingo. Kazaru grinned and shrugged helplessly, his voice procrastinated. The mission that the old man Sengoku gave me is correct, but this person is dead. Roy Vice Admiral, it's hard for me to deal with each other. Talking, he found out a military phone worm from Kabuto and dialed the communications of the headquarters. Bluebrew. The link sound of the phone worm communication rang quickly and it only lasted for less than a second before the phone worm was connected. It can be easily seen that the side of the phone worm has been waiting anxiously. Perusolino, you'll be on the island where Doflamingo is located. The old man has a bad hunch, Roy is very likely to do something with Doflamingo. Once the military phone worm was connected, Naval Headquarters Marshal Sengoku's anxious and hoarse voice suddenly came out, with a kind of extreme anxiety and urging. Kazaru paused. An erratic look glanced at Roy who was silent the marines with stiff expressions around him, and the body of Doflamingo lying in a pool of blood on the ground not far away. Marshal Sengoku, it looks like I'm late. The mission target, 
Don Quixote da Flamingo, has died in Roy's hands. All the members of the Don Quixote Pirates group died. Kazaru tilted his head slowly, quiet, deathly silence. Just after Kazaru's voice fell, lasted ten full seconds. The other side of the phone worm fell into a bottomless silence. But anyone can imagine that side in his mind. Marshal Sengoku's boundless anger was deeply suppressed to ultimate. Because they all heard the crackling sound of the former almost breaking his teeth. A long time, Sengoku's voice slowly sounded hoarse as if his throat was smoking, and his tone sank straight down, revealing an unspeakable chill. Perusalino. Bring back both Da Flamingo's body and Roy. If Roy and other Marines resist, the old man, in the name of the Supreme Commander of Naval Headquarters, will give you the authority to use force. When the voice fell, Sengoku directly cut off the communication angrily. It looks like there is no other way. Kazaru shook his head with seemingly helpless expression, looked at Roy, grinned and said. Brother Roy, do you want to fight me? Huh? Roy hasn't answered yet. The ghost spiders and marines on the side stepped forward together, all standing in front of Roy, staring palely at Kazaru. It's okay, just step back. Even if we are all tied together, it is not his opponent. You know, he is Marine Admiral, known as the world government's highest combat force. Roy sighed in his heart, stepped forward, and walked out of the crowd slowly. This is the truth, he didn't think he would be Kazaru's opponent now. He used to confront Akainu, it is clear that the gap between him and Marine Admiral is almost unattainable. Even at full combat power, directly broke out the trick just now. His odds of winning are infinitely close to zero. You won't run away. Kazaru looked at Roy who was walking to the front of the crowd with interest, and asked with a smile. Roy shook his head and said, Facing you, the fastest devil fruit in the world, is it necessary to escape? Most importantly, I don't think I did something wrong. Justice punishes crime, Marine hunts down pirates, it's a matter of course. With his head held high, there was no panic or fear that Kazaru would soon be escorted back to the headquarters for accountability. There was only one piece of fortitude and determination in his eyes. Da Flamingo and the pirate group he led, from North Blue to Grand Line to New World, killed tens of thousands of civilians, and countless families, islands, and countries destroyed by his crimes. Even if he is dead, he can't wash away the crimes he committed. Flee. That's what people who do the wrong thing will do. I am right. So I won't run away, Roy said solemnly. The flat voice in the mouth, what was said made everyone in the room moved by it. Kazaru was also taken aback when he heard the words, his eyes under the sunglasses gave Roy a meaningful look, and suddenly said something like this. Although I think you are stupid, but there is always a feeling of passion, which is really strange. Kazaru looked at Roy walking towards him with a playful expression on his face, and suddenly asked a question jokingly. Actually I'm very curious, why did you kill him? Roy paused, because he deserves to die. Kazaru was taken aback, smiled and said nothing. Boarding, return home. Kazaru came from Marineford this time, but actually brought a warship. It's just that time is running out, in order to hurry. He had to abandon his original warship and come alone. It's just that even he didn't expect that, the battle between Roy and Doflamingo ended so quickly. He did not expect, Roy's strength has actually increased to this level. But what he didn't expect most, it was still the decisive and cruel way Roy killed Doflamingo. Didn't he think of the consequences he would face next when he cut off Doflamingo's throat? Don Quixote da Flamingo is celestial dragons, even if it is forced to be expelled from the holy land Marie Joys. He is still one of the most noble blood in this sea. Not to mention the Marine Vice Admiral in Roy. Even Kazaru himself, the highest combat power of the world government, would not dare to attack the celestial dragons of the world aristocracy. On the returning warship, Roy was placed in the prison at the bottom of the warship cabin. In a pitch black and rotten environment, only a dim yellow chandelier was swaying with the waves on the deck overhead. The shadow cast heavy yellow light towards the prison. Roy Vice Admiral, I have wronged you first during this time. Kazaru's figure slowly walked down from the cabin, his expression mockingly authentic. You are not demon fruit power either, so the sea stone shackles are unnecessary. Roy shook his head disapprovingly and said, It's okay, I'm so happy here. He raised his head to look at Kazaru and asked, Have you found the lost heavenly gold? Kazaru scratched his head and said, According to the information you gave, my subordinates have found the hiding place of heavenly gold. The world government has also notified it, and is now sending someone to take it on the way. But how did you guess that Doflamingo hid the heavenly gold in that place? Roy smiled. The route of New World may seem complicated, but for the pirates, 
their navigation largely relies on permanent magnetic needles to indicate the direction. The place where the heavenly gold was robbed, and the country that was slaughtered by the Don Quixote pirates, there are only a few islands on the route between which the heavenly gold can be hidden. Even if I don't tell you, the headquarter will not take much time to find it. Kazaru was stunned. How can you know the geography and navigation knowledge of New World so well? He asked subconsciously. Roy took it for granted. Isn't this the curriculum in the military academy? Global geography and analysis of unique sea environment, Paluzolino Admiral, you are also a student of Teacher Zephyr. Kazaru scratched his head again, muttering in his heart that the old man's culture class failed. But, he was very surprised by Roy's calmness and indifference. Doesn't he know what exactly he will face next? On this sea, I am afraid that no one can keep him. Aren't you afraid? He became more and more curious about this nominal junior brother. Kazaru had no interest in everything in his life. It's a marine admiral who is interested, but can't lift the energy. The justice he upholds is, ambiguous justice, and he does not comment on anything. No personal position is his greatest position. So he has never seen someone like Roy. He clearly has a very big future and a great future. Everyone has high hopes for him, even the three of Kazaru sometimes couldn't help but inquire about this elementary school brother's information. Especially the guy Sakazuki, since the Ohara incident. He didn't say anything, but Kazaru clearly knew that the guy was anxious in his heart. Roy smiled and said, Is it useful to be afraid? Porusolino Admiral, I know my situation better than anyone. But I can't escape. If I escape, it's equivalent to announcing to the whole world that I'm just a deserter who is afraid of death and dare not take responsibility. Although I am afraid of death, but I don't want to be a deserter. Roy said, the figure sitting cross-legged sitting upright, like an unyielding javelin. Kazaru's face changed slightly when he heard it, and he stared at Roy strangely. He fell silent. After a while, he slowly said. So you believe that justice and justice still exist in this world? Roy smiled brightly. Someone has to try something like that before knowing if there is any, right? Kazaru was stunned. He slowly turned around. I'm afraid that in the face of absolute power and superior rules, all justice and fairness are not worth mentioning. After speaking, he left the prison at the bottom of the cabin. Outside, the wind and rain are getting worse. Strong winds and waves slapped warships and swept the entire world. Roy sat quietly in the dark, eyes slightly closed. It seemed to fall into deep sleep. The speed of the warship is very fast. Under the urging of the highest order of this department. This warship drove non-stop, and one day later, it broke through the storm and entered the naval headquarters marine ford. In the cabin prison, which is still dark and full of rancid smells. The passage in the cabin suddenly lit up, a figure with a deep breath walked down slowly and came to the iron fence of the prison. Are you ready? Kazaru held a yellowed oil lamp in his hand, and asked the quiet figure sitting cross-legged in the prison. I don't know why, but his expression and voice are not the mocking and cynical of the past. The young figure in the prison did not speak for a while, sitting straight on the icy ground, and the light of the shaking oil lamp fell on his face, reflecting his vicissitudes of life. He slowly opened his eyes. Eyes calm, can't see the slightest fear. Let's go, Kazaru Admiral. Roy whispered, and then slowly stood up, raised his hands and forced a hole in the steel fence in front of him, and walked out of the prison. Kazaru quietly looked at Roy, who looked indifferent before him, and suddenly said something like this. If you can survive by chance after today, just call me by name. Roy paused slightly and nodded, he stepped again. Beyond Kazaru's figure, step by step, walked towards the passage of the cabin. There, a faint beam of light cast in from the outside light. But his footsteps, that it was so heavy as to walk into the boundless darkness. Standing still, Kazaru was silent for a while, and then shook his head for a while. He admitted Roy, not because of the latter's strength, but because of the latter's will. Precarious, the gray sky is covered with lead clouds. The thick dark cloud resembles a black kabuto hat, covering the sky and the earth tightly, turning the whole world into gray, so that people can't breathe. Haven't gotten out of the cabin yet, Roy can already clearly feel the faint bloody breath in the air outside. The patter of drizzle was beating on the deck of the warship. Deep and crisp, as if hitting some depressing music. He didn't know what kind of ending he would usher in. The distance from the prison to the deck of a warship is only 10 meters. But this road has been extremely long, he is not afraid. He just fell into the memory. He completely liberated himself from all the ups and downs he had experienced on this sea in the past nearly a year. Let these memories babble in the deepest part of my mind, overflowing with. There is joy, have pain, have happiness. There is misfortune, confused, 
there is also a way forward. Finally, all these complicated memories are all gathered into the picture in front of you. Become clear, become distant again, Roy's mouth. A smile gradually hung up, he took a step. This step. Let the wind and rain from outside swallow his figure like an invisible beast. Light, although very weak, but it also occupied all his vision in an instant. After a few seconds, the picture before his eyes became clear again. Greet you, it is a marine phalanx with live ammunition and a vigilant look, standing on the naval port of Marineford. He glanced lightly at the countless marines standing on the military port. There are many familiar faces in it, but at this moment, everyone seemed to stand still, even the seagull flag on the distant sky that should have been flying in the wind. It also seemed to freeze the breath. Roy saw Zephyr with red eyes. Seeing Garp with a complicated look, I saw the sighing crane vice admiral. I also saw Momosagi and Hu Shaoshan with tearful faces. His gaze finally fell on the tall figure headed by the marine crowd. Marshal Sengoku, his brows are frowning, and his face is full of unresolved haze. Wind and rain hit Roy's body, it made him seem unable to move. He was soggy and didn't go any further, at this moment. Marshal Sengoku waved his hand heavily. Several marine generals appeared in front of Roy in a flash, whispering. Roy Vice Admiral, offended, Roy nodded, saying nothing. Just stretched out his hands and put them in front of him. Several marine generals exchanged their glances with vigilance, and then stepped forward at the same time, tying Roy's hands and feet in shackles. Add shackles to your body, everyone present sighed sadly. Is this already convicted? Roy slowly walked off the warship under the escort of marine generals. In countless complicated eyes, he came to Sengoku. Do you know your ending? Sengoku asked gritted his teeth. Roy nodded lightly. I know. Sengoku was stunned, as if surprised at Roy's calmness, he gritted his teeth again, his eyes red and said. Marine has always served the world government and celestial dragons. Roy smiled. It's always been this way, is it correct? As soon as this statement came out, everyone looked moved. Sengoku's expression was even more stagnant, he couldn't find any reason to refute Roy's words. He looked at Roy's determined face in front of him. Those eyes that are still bright, I sighed in my heart. Do you have anything else to do? He asked. Roy smiled. Marshal Sengoku, I have a request. Sengoku solemnly asked. What is it? You say, the old man will help you finish as much as possible. Roy slowly spit out a word that shocked everyone and his face was horrified. I don't admit my crime, I want to apply for the highest trial of the military court. As the most organized and large-scale military organization in this sea, naval headquarters naturally has its own set of unique operating mechanisms. The military court is the most unique one in this set of operating mechanisms. In any war, there will be situations similar to war criminals, especially for those high-ranking generals, the ruling of such military criminals is not so simple and can be determined. Therefore, military tribunals came into being to solve such difficult problems. And the highest trial of the military court, it is the highest arbitration, that only marine officers with the rank of naval headquarters vice admiral and above can propose. The conduct of such a supreme trial will be broadcasted publicly throughout the world at the same time, in order to achieve the principle of fairness, openness, and impartiality. In the history of marine, no one has ever filed an application for the highest trial by a military court, and even the vast majority of people are unaware of this rule. But Roy, who graduated with perfect scores from the military discipline and culture course at the military academy, clearly remembers such a project. Hearing Roy's sudden offer of such a condition, Marshal Sengoku, who had experienced the storm, couldn't help being stunned. He didn't expect that Roy could still think of this, and in the end there would be such a moth. You know you don't have any chance. Sengoku was struggling in his heart, and finally couldn't help but speak. If this public trial is allowed to unfold, then it will set off a boundless storm across the world. The final impact and consequences, Sengoku thought a little bit in his heart, and felt terrified. Because this will be an open discussion of justice and power, as well as a debate of justice and humanity. This is tantamount to nakedly exposing the cruel fact that, Marine is the watchdog of the world government, and letting Marine's, justice, be discredited in front of everyone in the world. Such a loss is something that Marine Marshal Sengoku cannot afford. The most important is, such a political influence will greatly reduce Sengoku's perception and impression in the eyes of the world government. I know that my chances of winning are slim, but there are some things that someone has to do. Roy smiled, his eyes firmly and authentic. Although hope was slim, he decided to give it a try. Sengoku's eyebrows tightened suddenly, his face dripping with gloomy expression.
Especially the weird eyes that countless marines around him looked at Roy and himself made him feel uneasy. But just when Sengoku was about to refuse, Zephyr on the side said with red eyes in a deep voice. The old man also supports the holding of this public trial, this is for justice. Sengoku was stunned. The other two voices also came out one after another. Well, at least after a proper trial can be convicted. This is Garp's voice, on the other side. Momosagi also took a step and said solemnly. Marshal Sengoku, if there is no trial, it is against the justice of our marine? Listening to them, Sengoku's face gradually changed. He is now completely overwhelmed, in full view. Roy's request was accompanied by marine veterans like Garp and Zephyr. Even if he is Marshal Marine, it is impossible to forcefully reject Roy's proposal. Damn Garp and Zephyr, you two old bastards always mess with me. Sengoku was in his heart, Chunin couldn't help but cursed secretly. He glanced at Garp and Zephyr angrily, then looked back at Roy in front of him, and said coldly. Since you made such a request, let it be as you wish. Three days later, the Naval Headquarters Military Court's highest trial will openly discuss Roy's charges of killing the World Noble Celestial Dragons. All penalties for Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Roy will be determined by the results of the public trial. After speaking, Sengoku waved his hand resentfully and walked away quickly. The expressions of the Marines present were slightly wrong, and in the end they all couldn't help but look at the young man whose hands and feet were shackled by sea stone, and the emotions in their hearts were extremely complicated. Perhaps this final ending will not change much. But at least, that Marine boy, still the same as in the past. As usual, fearlessly, trying to be the light in the eyes of the world Marine. Everyone knows why Roy did this, and for what exactly. He knows better than anyone what the fate of killing a celestial dragons will be. Yes, based on his achievements in the cultural class of the military school, and his understanding of marine military regulations and the status of the world government. He absolutely knows, but even if you know that you were greeted by death. He still faced it bravely, the sea stone shackles that block all abilities. Can't lock his hot soul. In this world, there are rules of supremacy. Have supreme authority, but there is also a free and upward heart. Warship, the sea, the wind is like a sharp knife. Roaring more than ever. On the warship, Roy, with his hands and feet in sea stone shackles, sat calmly on the deck, looking at the huge black figure slowly approaching him, shook his head and smiled. Unexpectedly, even you were shocked, Senior Magellan. Behind this road is a figure with huge black wings, and it is Magellan. He quietly looked at Roy, who was full of contentment, as if he was an okay person, and a faint sorrow appeared in his heart, his fists clenched uncontrollably. He knows what Roy did, he is more clear that. Roy should never be treated with such treatment. He just killed a pirate. I'm sorry, Roy, Marshal Sengoku attaches great importance to the next public trial. He does not want any discrepancies and situations in the days before this public trial. Magellan pursed her lips, and in the end a thousand words could only be turned into a sigh and whispered softly. Roy smiled disapprovingly and waved his hand. Such a wave of hands caused the sea stone shackles on his hands to collide with each other, making a sharp sound, which was particularly harsh. In particular, he was still wearing the snow-white military uniform that represented the power of Vice Admiral. Actually, I am very sorry for this matter, Marshal Sengoku. He murmured softly. Sengoku, to be honest, there is nothing wrong with him. After all, it's the ass that determines the head. Sitting in the hot position of Marshal Marine. He has to turn around the problems of the world government. Every effort must be made to maintain the face of the world government and the authority of celestial dragons. This is understandable. When Roy did this, he, the Marine Marshal, naturally took on countless pressures. Once he angered the world government, maybe his political career as Marine's supreme commander would be over. Magellan raised his hand and patted Roy's shoulder, then smiled bitterly. In this situation, you should take care of yourself first. Speaking, facing the next public trial, are you ready? He looked at Roy curiously. Roy shrugged and smiled. I don't have time to prepare. To be honest, I didn't intend to kill Doflamingo at all, but that guy is really annoying. And you have seen the situation in the past few days. I have been in a state of imprisonment and isolation. No one is allowed to see me let alone prepare any evidence and materials. Magellan frowned deeply. Then what are you going to do? Roy put his chin in one hand and said, I'll know it then. I am not a prophet, I can only see one step at a time. Magellan couldn't help being silent. The warship was sailing fast. But half an hour, they crossed the triangular ocean current, passed the gate of justice, and once again came to the eerie and magnificent deep sea prison. Impel down Impelton. Unexpectedly, I would be escorted here one day. 
Roy looked at the huge fortress prison in front of him, and subconsciously appeared in his mind the image of himself escorting Douglas Bullet to that day, and his eyes trembled. In just one or two months, from Marine Heroes, Military Academy representatives. He became a world-class criminal waiting to be tried and executed. This sense of contradiction, which seems like a world away, is enough to make anyone collapse. The prison door slowly opened, the warship sailed into the port. Magellan didn't keep up, just staring at Roy's figure blankly. Under the escort of the jailer beast, slowly swallowed by the huge dark entrance of Impel Down. He didn't know exactly what kind of future Roy would face, but a heart seemed to be firmly grasped by something invisible, very sour, tight, and empty. He, he clearly did nothing wrong, at the same time. Naval Headquarters Marineford, Marshall's Mansion. Sengoku solemnly dialed a dedicated line. Sengoku, we have received the news. This time, you really disappointed us. As soon as the telephone worm dedicated line was connected, a cold, hoarse old voice came slowly from inside, revealing an indescribable threat and coldness. Public trial. This kind of plausible procedure should have been abolished long ago. Another old voice sounded. Sengoku, we promoted you to where you are now, but it wasn't for you to mess with us. The Holy Land has already exploded. If you don't handle this matter well, then you marshal marine, maybe you will end up. There was another voice. Although Doflamingo has been expelled from the Holy Land, he is Celestial Dragons no matter what. The authority of Celestial Dragons must not be offended. This is the iron law in this sea. That's it, Sengoku. Impel down, we will send someone to deal with it. Never let that kid appear in the military court alive. 